Hi, this is Don DeRosa, and I have another video blog for you to share with you today. And this one's a pretty interesting one because it deals with subject to the existing financing, basically a technique that I teach on how to take over someone else's mortgage, um, where they give you the deed, and then also coupled with a bankruptcy where the homeowner, the original homeowner, files a bankruptcy. So I'm going to kind of paint the picture here of what I think based on what this question was. We had a homeowner, if I, read the, if I read the question correctly, we had a homeowner that was in trouble, gave the property to an investor subject to the existing financing. Now, <clears throat> it says here the investor takes over the house subject to and makes payments on the house for over a year and a half. So the investors had this house for a year and a half and they've made the payments. The pre during that time or at the end of that year and a half, previous owner files bankruptcy. And the mortgage, it says here, and the mortgage is discharged. They don't owe, they don't owe it anymore. While the old homeowner is in the bankruptcy, the investor gets behind on the payments. Because the payments are behind, the bank starts sending notes to the homeowner, which the investor gets because all the statements go to the investor. So the homeowner doesn't see that. Bank has now set the notice of foreclosure is set for all, uh, April, I'm sorry. Now the investor has called the bank, gotten the reinstatement amounts needed to stop the foreclosure. Now according to the person asking this question, they say, my take is, there's nothing to reinstate. If the original mortgage was discharged, seems to me there really isn't anything officially in place anymore that is still taken or considered taken subject to the existing financing. I think the bank doesn't have anyone on record officially that owns the note. Okay, that's where we get real. This that's where this thing really. There's a misunderstanding across the board and almost all of this. Okay, so I think he will be throwing money down the hole if he brings the note current. I think if the investor pays to reinstate, the bank will say, "Gee, thanks. Now let's go on with the foreclosure because that's the only legal way they have to get their money back." There are obviously two different departments involved from the bank, and it sounds like one does not know about the bankruptcy. Am I right about this? Well, no. In a word, no. You're completely confused. And this is why I thought it was a pretty good learning tool here. Now, first, I'm going to break down the, the question. We have the investor who basically took it over, subject to the existing financing from a homeowner. The homeowner goes out and files bankruptcy after the fact. Well, what I don't know is I don't have a lot of the information that I need to really give a good answer, but I want to explain to you how a new person could interpret some of this. A little information is dangerous because they may think they understand it, but they don't. And this is how something can get, can go get uh, messed up in a hurry. For example, um, let's see, let me go back to you. So the subject to, he takes over the payments. He makes the payments for a year and a half. The homeowner files bankruptcy. Now, depending on which type of bankruptcy the homeowner files, whether it's a Chapter 7 or a Chapter 13, really depends on what happens to the investor. If the homeowner files a Chapter 13, and I'm going to digress for a second, one of the reasons why I teach all of my students to close at a title company or an attorney when they do a subject to is for this reason is, this is for one of the main reasons because if there's a bankruptcy situation your attorney you're the investor your attorney can represent you in bankruptcy court to say that this was a valid sale and it should not be included in the bankruptcy it gets really hairy when because the persons that filed the homeowner that filed the bankruptcy their name is still on the loan so that you can understand where it gets a little hairy there so anyways so the homeowner files bankruptcy. Well, the during that time they filed bankruptcy, the the investor unfortunately can't make the payments. Well, that's mistake number one. He probably shouldn't have bought the house if he couldn't make the payments. But that's a whole other soapbox that I can stand on. But let's just deal with what we've got. So he stops making the payments. The bank starts, you know, if Again, this really is dependent on whether it's a 7 or a 13. If it's in 7, I'm going to assume it's in 7 because she mentions in here that um, 
previous owner files bankruptcy and the mortgage is discharged. It's not really discharged. It's not discharged until they complete the entire bankruptcy. What she probably means, it's been dismissed. Uh, and that's dismissed means it's dismissed because of lack of payment. On a discharge, they've discharged your, um, your bankruptcy because you've met your obligation. On a dismissal, that means you haven't. So the, banks, so the courts just say, you know what, they just throw the bankruptcy out and now you're back to, starting, back to the starting place. So she misused some verbiage there. There's a difference between discharge and dismissal. You might want to look that up or that could be another blog for a different day. But she makes a comment here that says they don't owe it anymore. Well, that's not true either. Um, if they file bankruptcy and then it's a Chapter 13 and they're making their payments, the bank can't do a darn thing. They can't foreclose. They can't take anything away. However, if they miss their Chapter 13 payments, the bank has every right to come in and do what's called a lift of stay, meaning they come in and they, they, they petition the court, they basically petition the court to lift the bankruptcy. The homeowner is still responsible for that mortgage at that point. So depending on which type of bankruptcy they're in, that's, that's the issue. Okay, So that's a, kind of a false statement there. So now, bank has sent the notice of foreclosure, investors called back, gotten the amount to reinstate. So he knows how much it is to reinstate, but she makes a very interesting question down here. Uh, so I think he will be throwing money down the hole if he brings the note current. Absolutely not. Obviously, he's trying to do the right thing by bringing it current and making, you know, stopping the foreclosure. Just because a person went into bankruptcy, if it's a Chapter 13, the homeowner can still keep the home, and in his case, he can still keep his asset because he's the investor just by reinstating it. Just because a person goes into bankruptcy and because the pro property has been removed from bankruptcy doesn't mean the bank has the right to foreclose if you bring it current. Uh, they can't just foreclose for if you have the money to bring it current and reinstate it, they have to accept it. So. I mean, I shouldn't say they have to. There are rare cases where the banks have refused to, to do it, but it's very, very, very rare. Banks want money, not houses, especially in this market. So keep that in mind. Um, now, I think the, it says here, now, with the foreclosure, is that, is that the only legal way for the bank to get their money? Well, no, because if the investor can reinstate it, banks want money because banks make money on payments. They don't make money by taking houses back. So the bank really doesn't want to foreclose and take this house back. They want to get the payments. So that's kind of a fallacy. She's misunderstanding what the thing is. But just because somebody files bankruptcy doesn't mean you lose your house. You still, you're still own your home. And just because someone files bankruptcy doesn't mean they go like this with everything and they walk away. Now in a chapter 7, it's pretty close because they basically say uncle and they only get to keep basically according to whatever state, whatever uh, Homestead Act they have. They're, they're, you know, some states, most states, it's like $10,000 per person, per homeowner. So husband and wife, you get twenty grand, ten thousand dollars a piece. You get to keep based on the homestead. Other states may be different, but that's what it's like here. So, but that's all you're allowed to keep and that could be, it come in the form of a car, could come in the form of some cash, whatever the case is, you're only allowed to keep so much money. Then the, the, the bankrupt, bankruptcy, tr bankruptcy trustee takes the rest and tries to pay back the debtors. Um, or creditors, I mean, not debtors. Pay back the creditors. So to, to make a long story short in this, um, the answer to the, her question is, the investor absolutely has a leg to stand on and really should, he has an obligation to reinstate that mortgage if he's got the funds and the availability to do that because that's the right thing to do. And it won't hurt him in the long run because if the property has been dismissed from bankruptcy and is no longer in the bankruptcy umbrella, he's free to do with it whatever he wants. So hopefully that has given you some insight but a uh, very confusing question this week, but it's a very good question that we need to get more information on. So look forward to more information on bankruptcy because I thought this was a really good question. 
and there's a lot of people out there obviously that need assistance in this. So if you like that, I'd love for you to leave a comment on that at the bottom. So please leave a comment, let me know what you thought one way or the other. And if you want to leave a question similar to this, just go down to the Ask Don DeRosa, just go to the Ask Don DeRosa website and put it at the very bottom, you know, whatever question you want, and I'll make sure I address it here on the on the website. Until next time, thank you very much. Have a good day.